are Campbell's Kingdom. this guy they call King Campbell. Is he nuts like they say? Nuts? <laughs> no, I guess the only thing old Stuart Campbell's nuts about is oil. The devil of it is, there's no oil here, I know. I did the survey for him. That's my truck up there. I had to leave it when the snows came early. And there isn't any oil? Nope. Not even enough to slick your hair down with. <laughs> That's what the consultant's report says anyway. Came in last week. That the dam you were telling me about? Yeah. The Fergus mine started about, uh, oh, three years back. Old Campbell stopped him, got an injunction or something. On account of the oil? Yeah. They can't go drowning potential oil fields. <laughs> Campbell? Hey, Campbell! Looks like there's something wrong. Campbell? found him. Is it true? Sure. Boy Bladen found him. It's true, Mr. Morgan. There was this American one up there with him. Campbell's dead, all right. So he's dead. Well, I guess we can go ahead now. We're going to finish the dam, Mr. Morgan. You give me all job back, Mr. Morgan? Sure, I will. We were in the clear anyway after that survey, but now nothing can stop us. You guys are part of the office in the morning, okay? All right. All right.
Hey, you're here. Hey. You had me scared for a minute. I thought you were dead. Just come lucky? Come lucky? Into the world. Back or beyond, call it what you like. Well, thanks for the lift. You find a room over there of a kind. Thanks. Good luck. Sure, okay. Right. <laughs> I? I'd like a room for the night if you have one, please. A room? Oh, I'm not so sure. You'll have to talk to Jean about that. Since my wife died, you see, she... Just for a night or two, that's all. Oh, oh, well, I think she can manage that. Jean, just sign the book, will you, please? Good evening. Campbell. Yeah. You'll be no relation to Stuart Campbell, the man we used to call King Campbell. Yes, I'm his grandson. Jean, just fix up Mr. Campbell. Uh, yes, room, I will. You? Will you come this way, please? I'll take that. Thank you. Hey, what brings you to come lucky if it ain't a rude question? Time enough for the questions, Ben. It's a hard road into come lucky. You'll be tired, eh, son? Yes, a bit. Interested in some land around here? I don't know what it's got to do with you. But if you're talking about Campbell's kingdom, yes, I am. Why shouldn't I be? It's my property. The kingdom your property? Yes. Oh, and Morgan. How do you do? We don't want any more camels in this valley. Why don't you? How about a drink? There are one or two things I think you ought to know. All right. This is Ben Creasy, my partner. Didn't your lawyers in England tell you about the hydroelectric plant, Mr. Campbell? They, uh, they said someone named Fergus wanted to buy the property. Yeah, that's right. I work for Henry Fergus. I'm building a dam up there for the Fergus mines. Take a seat. I guess you've come a long way for nothing, Mr. Campbell. In a couple of months, the dam will be finished. And there won't be any kingdom after that. It'll be a lake. You mean you're flooding it? Yeah, that's right. But it's not your property. I haven't agreed to sell. Whether you agree or not makes no difference. I guess you've been hearing stories about some oil, huh? Um, my grandfather was convinced that he was wrong. Happen. There is no oil, so we got the injunction lifted. That's right. We had to wait for the survey report, but the figure showed once and for all there's no oil anywhere near Campbell's Kingdom. And that was from one of the best mining consultants in Calgary. That's right. So there's nothing to stop us now. I'm afraid there's nothing you can do about it. Uh, you, you have government permission to flood. That's right. Oh, don't take it too hard. The land's useless. There's a nice bit of compensation coming your way. $10,000, it said. <clears throat> so what did you want with the kingdom anyway, Mr. Campbell? I, I thought I might live up there. Live up there? He did. Yeah, because he had to. He didn't dare stay down here with the people he'd swindled. You think he was crooked too, don't you? Oh, I know darn well he was. You ask any okay, other guy Okay, man, take it easy. But you didn't hate him as much as I did. He harmed me much more than he ever harmed you. Well, you know, when you're 13 or 14, it doesn't help growing up with everyone knowing that your grandfather was in jail for fraud. But I know better now. He wasn't crooked. And he believed in something. Yeah. In oil. <laughs> Supposing he was right. 
Mr. Campbell, your room is ready now. Thank you. Excuse me. I think you'll find that we are right, Mr. Campbell. Anyway, take a rest. You look tired. Thanks, I will. What did he come all the way from England for? You heard him. He's going to live up there. In here. You uh, felt the atmosphere downstairs. Yes. Your grandfather stood in the way of the dam. I think they're afraid you might do the same. Huh. I gather I couldn't even if I wanted to. That dam means work for them all. Sawmill in the town. Factories, maybe. Come lucky wasn't always like this, you know. Fifty years ago, it was a boom town. Gold. And the mine ran dry. Just like that. So you see, your grandfather's promise of oil up in the kingdom looked like it might save him. Everyone put money into his company. Some put all they had. He didn't swindle them. Don't they realize that? He started the company. And when it crashed, he went to trail. His partner got away with all the money. Yeah. Yes, I know. But they don't care about that. They just say they trusted Campbell with every dollar they had. They nearly broke his heart. Did you know him very well? Oh, yes. I've known him all my life. When I left school in England, I came to live next door with my aunts. They were the only friends he had. And I moved in here to help Mac out when his wife died. You're Jean Lucas, aren't you? Can you tell me all about you in this? And about the oil, and his hopes, and his despair. They broke his heart, all right. The first and only word I ever had from him. And then the cable from the lawyer to tell me that he was dead and the kingdom was mine. So that's why you came? Hmm? Yes. I hadn't been too well. The doctors thought a change might do me good. You need a rest. Tomorrow we'll go and fetch your grandfather's things. My aunts have them. Well, good night. Good night. This is all there was. You see, he hadn't many possessions. Possessions don't make the man, Mr. Campbell. No, no, of course not. I brought them down from the kingdom when he died. I knew he wanted you to have them. There wasn't much. His diary, signet ring, watch. Abigail, you didn't open it. Whoops, as if I would. You told me. But I didn't know myself. Oh, well, somebody told me. I never approved of this project about the dam and the riffraff that Morgan's got into work on it. It's not safe to set foot outside the house. I think you'd be safe, Abigail. A letter, Mr. Campbell. Well, if it's not too private, we should be interested to hear it. Abigail. Oh, no, Mr. Hippogriff. Ruth, you know you're just as curious as I am. I think perhaps you, you ought to hear it. It's dated the Kingdom, 20th of October. Dear Bruce, when you read this, the Kingdom will be yours. I'm old and tired. I no longer have the energy or the desire to fight for my beliefs. Today I received the report on Bladen's survey. It would seem to prove that all my work and all my hopes have been in vain. Poor oh, Stuart. Pray continue, Mr. Campbell. All I am sure of is that after the big landslide of 1926, I saw oil seeping from the rock. I do not know what sort of a man you are, but I beg of you before God somehow to find the money 
and to test my beliefs for the last time using the only certain method, drilling. Do this before they finish the dam and before the kingdom is flooded forever. Do this also for our good name, because whatever others say, I believed in what I did, and because throughout my long life I've never cheated any man of what was rightfully his. May God bless you in your endeavours, Stuart Campbell. Who, uh, who was this man, Bladen? Does he know his job? He's the best surveyor this town will ever see. If he did a reliable survey, that means there's no oil in the kingdom. Look, I've been thinking. Owen Morgan runs this town. Supposing he got at Boy Bladen's figures before they went down to Calgary for analysis. And changed them. Why not? This dam means a fortune to him. Where is Bladen? He's due in here tomorrow. Have you told him what you think? <laughs> well, no, I wasn't sure enough. But now with that letter. What will you do, Mr. Gamble? I don't think I've got much choice, do you? Whenever I find Morgan. In there. You better stay out, mister. He's good and mad. You're looking for work? No, I want to get to the top of the dam. You'll have to ask him. He's got boy Bladen in there just now. Now, look, I've a damn good mind to take you to court. Yeah? I work for Henry Fergus. You're going to take him to court, too? Yeah, well, a truck doesn't catch fire of its own accord. Did you set fire to that truck of mine, Morgan? Oh, why in God's name, why? Take it easy. That truck was insured. You'll get your money. Or was there something in it you wanted? I only wanted my equipment. Just wonder what it was you wanted. Mr. Bladen. Oh, some other time. What do you want? A lift to the top of that hoist of yours. What are you going to do? Inspect your kingdom? Well, it is mine, you know. <laughs> Till you flood it. And it seems that you control the only way to get there. That's right. Would you mind giving me a lift to the top? Now, look. I've had enough of Campbell's. I couldn't flood when the old man was alive. He was a sort of national figure. But no one's going to stand by you. You're nobody. I talked with Morgan. It was him set fire to the truck, I guess. Well, of course it was. I told you why, too. Morgan. Are you frightened of something? What did you say? Frightened I might find something out? Such as? Well, I don't know yet. But I could start with the truck that caught fire. guy's going to cause some trouble before he's through. Here, take this up to the hoist.
in England. I suppose what was that and the altitude up here? Maybe we'd better let him sleep a while. Jean, I'm worried. I don't like you being here and come lucky. <laughs> well, I'm not going. Well, why not? You saw what happened. That and my truck. And Morgan's going to get tough if we start trying to push him. I'm not leaving. Especially not now. Come on down to Calgary with me. You know what I'm trying to say. The answer's still no, boy. Always will be. I, um... Uh... I think I must have passed out. Must be the altitude, you know. We're 6,000 feet up here. Takes a bit of getting used to. Yeah. You saw what happened? Yes, we both did. Oh, this is Boy Bladen. Yes, I know. We've met before. I suppose they were just trying to warn me off. It's all right, thank you. I can manage on my own. It's just that I've been uh, stuck behind a desk a bit too long. Um, you, uh, you think that Morgan set fire to your truck, don't you? Mm-hmm. Why? Oh, well, I don't know. I guess we just didn't get on. I mean, the, the dam was at a standstill. I was doing the survey. Do you think there's any oil up there? Consultant's report says no. Yeah, I know. Not. I'm asking you your opinion. Well, a seismological survey is not conclusive. How does it work? Oh, it's simple enough. You... Well, uh, take one, Travers. Now, uh, I drill a line of shot holes in the rock. Then, in each one, I set off a charge. Well, then, the echo of the explosion rebounds from the various rock strata, is picked up by instruments, and the time's recorded on tape in thousandths of a second. The same principle as finding a submarine? Yeah. Well, then, with a small outfit like mine, I send the recordings down to a mining consultant. He plots the strata and then makes out his report. So, while you're actually recording, you can't be sure if you're right or wrong. No, you can't be sure, but... But what? Well, the last Travers I did, I could have sworn that I was running slap up against an anticline. That's, uh, that's sort of like a, a dome of rock strata. <laughs> a surveyor's dream, you could call it. Just the kind of formation in which oil could be trapped. And that's what you thought you'd got? Well, like I said, you can't be sure. Now, all these recordings went down in the hoist. Yeah. All of them. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Uh, could Morgan have substituted a batch of recordings that he knew were no good? Could you check on this? No, you couldn't very well. Wait a minute. The last set. I did another line of shots just to be sure. Yeah, and I never completed them, so I never sent them down. So Morgan said fire to your truck to be certain. They weren't in my truck. What? They're in my grip in Stuart Campbell's cabin. Well, all we need, then, is the set of recordings you sent down to Calgary to compare with your recordings in the grip in the kingdom. Yeah. And then we'd be sure. Yeah, we'd know. Can you get them? Well, you can't get up to the kingdom just yet, but I'll leave for Calgary straight away. Got you some in, Mr. Morgan. Your contract says you deliver to the top. Okay, but I ain't paying you $90 to use that hoist. So how'd you figure on getting it up there? This is crazy. I'm supplying the cement to you. No, 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 no. You're supplying the cement to the Fergus mines. That means Henry Fergus. I'm building a dam for Fergus. And I charge you $15 a truck for my hoist. Okay? Think it over.
come in. Laden back yet? No, the road to Calgary's flooded. I doubt if we could get through. Well, he's probably thought better of it and run out on us. He wouldn't do that. <laughs> Why not? Sensible thing to do, if you ask me. You know, it looks to me as if you're the one who's running out. Don't think I haven't wished I could. Bruce, you're a strange man. Don't you realize if you were to strike oil up in the kingdom, you'd be worth a million? You don't care? No. If I go through with this crazy scheme, it'll be for one reason only. Because I can't get the thought out of my mind of that old fool dying up there all alone. Of a broken heart. And that's the, the only reason. I forgot you had a boyfriend. I haven't got a boyfriend. What are you doing in a dump like this anyway? Bruce, what's the matter? Waiting. I can't stand waiting. I wanted you to kiss me. But not like that. There's time. There's not. I've got six months, that's all. Six months? To live? Do you think I'd normally pass out because some half would try to run me down with a the truck? There's a beautiful medical phrase for what I've got. I know it backwards. The doctors in London drummed it into me. Sorry, I shouldn't have told you. I'm glad you have. I came here to get away from people. <laughs> Dying alone seems to be a Campbell habit. Come in. Just come in, Mr. Campbell. Thank you. Twenty thousand is my final offer. Notify acceptance or we settle by arbitration after flooding. Fergus. They all know about this, Miss Jean. If you don't agree, it's going to be trouble. Who is it, Morgan? All the men are here. Afraid they lose their jobs. Fine. I feel just like seeing them now. Huh? Go ahead, go ahead, ask him now. Hey, you gonna sell? We wanna know now. No, I'm not. Listen, Campbell, you get out of this dark. We don't want any Campbells here. You come one step nearer, Buster, and I'll knock the teeth through the back of your head. All right, Morgan, what about it? Or don't you do your own dirty work? We got a chance to earn a living. We don't want you lousing up like your grandpa did. Yeah. Yeah. Right. 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 Yeah. Old man Campbell was the devil incarnate. We were tempted. We forgot the words of the holy book. I tell you, the way of the wicked is... Hey, they say you got ideas about oil, too. Oil? Hell, he ain't got no oil. We want that dam, and neither you nor anybody else is going to stop us getting it. Maybe you'll tell us once for all, Mr. Campbell. Do you mean to try for oil in the kingdom? The kingdom is my property until it's flooded. Anything I choose to do up there is entirely my affair. No, it ain't. We've heard all this before. 
He'll try and stop us just like the old man did. Don't you see, if we do find oil up there, it'll mean more money, far more than any dam could ever bring. Oh, we've heard that one too. Yeah. Don't listen to him. Hey, Morgan. You ever seen these before? Yeah. They look like survey figures. I've seen plenty. Yeah, that's what it is. Report of a survey I did for King Campbell. So? So these aren't my figures. Mine gave a good chance of there being oil up there. These don't give any chance at all. What's that got to do with me? Well, my guess is that these are your figures, Morgan. Dirty, fake figures taken off a dud report and switched with mine. Maybe you can prove that. I think we can. Yeah, maybe we will. Maybe I'll show up a few other things that have gone on around here, like, like that dead cement you're using up at the dam. The, the government inspect the dam, Bladen. Sure, but they can't tell if you're packing it with rotten cement. Ah, he's crazy. Cut price cement. Salvaged off Queen Charlotte's Island after the shipwreck last fall. If you can show me a crack in that dam, I want to see it. It hasn't got millions of tons of water leaning on it. Yet. You better watch what you're saying, Blake. If you did fake those reports, it means that you killed Stuart Campbell. The old man died from heart failure. Everybody knows that. That means you killed him as sure as if you put a bullet through him. Come on, let's get out of here. I'm going to sort this out now, Morgan. Once and for all. Well, Morgan's right, of course. Those figures from Calgary don't prove anything until we compare them with my notes. And they're at the kingdom. Yeah. Any chance of getting them? A darn good try. Supposing Bladen had done the set of recordings and they were in the truck. You thought of that too? I sent Max up on his horse. I told him to burn any paper or any recordings he could find. guard there. Let's hope nobody sees us. Could you wake the hoist? Yeah, I think so. It's only a diesel. Oh, come on, then. gonna have to stay down here and work this thing. Well, you're the one that knows how. I'll go up. I can get your grip. You don't know this place. I mean, uh, you can't go up there alone. I know these mountains. Bladen, that's my inheritance up there. I've never even seen it. Well, give us a ring when you get up there, okay? Fine. The notes and the tape are in my grip behind the door to the bedroom. It's black and got my name on it. Okay. Hey, here, better take this.
Clayton? I'm at the top. Give you a call when I want to come down. Right. I mind how you go. Boy, stop him. What? Max is up there. Stop him. Campbell? It's gone. Get the cage down. It's too late to do anything about it now. Well, somebody's got to do something about it. Max is waiting for him. Well, he can look after himself. The boy, he's a very sick man. Get the cage down. even drive a car, let alone work this hoist. You must let me go. I told you already, if Max is up there, I'm going. You're going to stay right here. Fine thing if that happened with the both of you up there. We'll have to take a chance on that. I'm still going. Look, boy, I couldn't even move that wheel. Well, could I? It took all your strength. Well, all right, but be careful. Okay. Nothing by Mr. Campbell on it? Seeing ghosts, Max? What are you doing up here? I was about to ask you the same question. How did you get up here? By the trail? Yeah. Yeah, the, the trail. Who sent you, Morgan? No. Uh, nobody sent me. I was... You better think again, Max. You... You... You won't tell him I said so, will you? I won't tell him. 
He sent you up here to destroy those reports, didn't he? Has he got the real one? Yeah, but you, you promise you, you won't tell him I said so, will you? I won't tell him, I promise. Max! Morgan told you to drive that truck at me, didn't he? Do you always do what he tells you? Yeah. Even if it means killing someone? I didn't kill nobody. You nearly killed me in that truck. And that phony report killed Stuart Campbell. I didn't kill him. I didn't kill Danny. I didn't kill... Danny who? Who, Max? I didn't kill him, honest. I only went to hurt him a little bit. Him and two other boys, they tied me to a bull for a gag. And, and I was hurting. I wanted to hurt him back. And, he was, he was older than I was. You, you asked Mr. Morgan. You just asked. You, you, you just asked Mr. Morgan. <laughs> All right, Max. You better go. You won't tell Mr. Morgan I told you, will you? No, I won't tell him. You better get going. Go on. What are you doing here? Max. I had to warn you. I heard them talking at the hotel. I knew he was coming. I thought you might get hurt. I'm all right. He didn't hurt me. He just tried to burn the report, that's all. Forget the report. Forget the oil. You didn't sound very like you. Your life is more important than all the oil. I've got six months. If I can beat Morgan in that time, I'll consider my life well spent. You expect me to stand by and watch you kill yourself? It's nothing to do with you. I've told you that before. I'm alone and I'm staying alone. Do you get it? Seems you've got to lock up your property around here. I could prosecute you for trespass. I wouldn't do that if I were you. I've got some rather useful evidence here. I want this place guarded from now on. Two our men, day and night. You go, boy. Please, Bruce, you've done enough. She's going in the jeep with you, gone. Bruce, be sensible. Go on. Go on. <laughs> that was a, that was Fergus, wasn't it? Yeah. Ten million dollars worth of Henry Fergus. What do you think he's doing? Your guess is as good as mine. Oh, Mr. Campbell? Yes? I'm Henry Fergus. You get my telegram? Yes. You didn't reply. Well, there's no point. I'm doubling the compensation offer for your bit of land. Oh, you know. I can't waste any more time. I agree with you, Mr. Fergus. I'm tired of wasting time, too. Good. 
I need that, Dan. The price of electricity has rocketed, and I must have my own source of power for the Fergus mines, not to mention my new projects in this town. $20,000 is a nice sum of money, Mr. Campbell. It's a nice piece of land. It's useless, and you know it. I'm not selling. Somebody has evidently underestimated you. $50,000. I need that dam. It's a lot of money. Time is money. I want that dam finished quickly and without any more interference from you. Well, I don't want your money, Mr. Fergus. And I intend to interfere, as you call it, to the utmost of my ability. Because I believe there is oil up there. I believe you faked those reports, and those reports killed an innocent man. You'll end up in a law court. Yeah, I hope I do. With you in the dark. I should remember, if I were you, that your grandfather served a sentence in jail. And that won't help you any. That man with Bladen, do you know him? Yeah. He's an oil rig operator. His name is MacDonald. And he's here to drill me an oil well in the kingdom. You can't fight me, Campbell. I can't fight Fergus. He's going to own this town. It'll be more than my business is worth to let you stay here now. You mean, uh, you want me to move out? I'm sorry, son. <laughs> That's all right. Your grandfather used to enjoy my beefsteak pie. Ah, it's a great pleasure having a Campbell staying in the house again. Well, I just hope I won't be too much trouble for you, that's all. Of course you won't, dear boy. I'll go and get the coffee. Yeah, Mr. Campbell, while Abigail's away and before the others arrive, I want to show you something. Gold? My father made it out of the Come Lucky Mine. This was my share. You mean he left it to you just like that? Oh, yes. <laughs> he didn't believe in banks. Of course, there was more, but we've had to live. Why are you showing me this? Because if ever you need money, I want you to ask me. Miss Ruth, I couldn't possibly ask you. But there's plenty there. Please, Mr. Campbell. Yes, but I... I had a great friend once. I loved him very dearly. He was married. Uh, quite happily. He never had any money, and he wouldn't take it from me. He would have wished me to help you. It was my grandfather, wasn't it? Yes. Are these the figures you brought from Calgary? Yeah. And these are your figures? Yes, made on the spot last year. Then you're right. Somebody did change them. Sure, but there's not enough to prove anything there. I mean, I'd, I'd have to do another survey. That would take weeks. We haven't got the time. Do you know anything about drilling? Oh, me? No, nothing at all. I was stuck behind a desk in a cable company. It's a pity you're a camper. It's a name I'm not over fond of. I've never met a Scotsman who refused a fortune. Now, see here, Mr. Campbell. I came out here 20 years ago from South Hewis, and I've worked all that time as a roughneck driller to save enough to buy my own rig. What's in this for me? 25% if we strike. And if we don't? Nothing. Make it 33 and a third. Done. You're being just a bit hasty. Well, I have nothing else to offer you, and I have no capital. That goes for me, too. I could work about six weeks in the clear. But if we didn't strike oil then, and six weeks only means a few thousand feet of drilling. All right, Campbell. I'll do it. But there's just one thing. My rig needs five trucks, and if Morgan's not going to let us... I'll get your stuff up to the kingdom. Don't you worry about that. But I'm not a Campbell. I'll not go against the government. But the government built that road up to the dam. Morgan improved it, but he doesn't own it. He's breaking the law by using those roadblocks. Still his hoist all the But he same. can't complain legally if we use it. 
He's got too much to lose. But you can't use it either. I've been looking at it. I think we can. Once. Now then, problem. How to get the trucks with a drilling rig up to the kingdom without Morgan stopping them? You tell us. Well, remember, it'll be dawn. And our first problem is that roadblock there. There's only one guard. We've got to get him out of the way long enough to get the trucks through. He's still going to give the alarm sometime. And no bloodshed. We don't want to start another clan war. There won't be a clan war, Mac. And it doesn't matter if he does give the alarm. Do you see that uh, rocky overhang down there? Uh-huh. Well, that's going to fall right across the road just after our trucks have gone through. Well, you've still got about 40 of Morgan's men up there at the construction camp. Yeah. 38 with the foreman, Butler. And he'd murder his mother in her sleep. But supposing there was a landslide down on the road with a roadblock? Wouldn't it be perfectly normal for Morgan to send those men down to help clear it? You could always ask him. Yes, I could. I think I could sound sufficient like Morgan on the field telephone. This man doesn't want to live. All right, so you pull it off, maybe. Butler takes his men down to clear the fall of the roadblock, and we arrive at the hoist with Mac's trucks. Well, supposing somebody gives the alarm then, I mean, uh, back comes Morgan with his boys, and <laughs> who digs our graves? He won't come back. Do you see that little bridge right down there? Doesn't look awfully strong to me. If it collapsed, Morgan's men would be cut off. I don't like this at all. Look, if you don't want to help me, I'll find somebody who will. It's a hell of a risk. Doesn't seem much of a risk. Not for a third share in an oil field. All right, boys. I still can't understand why you want your knife covered up, Mr. McDonald. Mind your business. How long will it take us to come lucky? Five hours, maybe less. Better make it five exactly. We're due at the crossroads at first light. Four o'clock on the dot. What is this, a military operation? Just so. Well, that lets me out. I'm on fit. Go away and drive your truck. Yes, Mr. McDowell. Charge. Well, that ought to rattle a few windows. Well, if you're going, you better get going. Yeah. Now, don't get yourself lost on the pony trail. Don't worry, I won't. Now, when the trucks arrive, see if they get moving fast, will you? You just see they get there. Well, they'll get there, all right. Got much more to do? No, nope, just gotta hide the wire, that's all. All right, good luck. Averaging 20. Got a step on it a bit. Two minutes to go. That's the roadblock. Get into position where you can see the guard and the hut. 4.30, he'll get my telephone call. He should start walking along towards the overhang. And if he doesn't, I have to come back here and warn you. That's right. But follow him till he gets onto the shortcut. I must know when he's on the shortcut. Then you can go straight home. But I... Just hope McDonald's not late. Right, it's time now. You better clear off. Good luck. Hmm? Oh, go on.
Roadblock, okay. Morgan here? Yes, Mr. Morgan. That last truck that went through just reported a fall down by the lower bridge. Get down and check it. Be quicker to send a truck down from the top, Mr. Morgan. You're the nearest. Get moving. At once. Yes, Mr. Morgan. And use the shortcut. <laughs> A minute late. <laughs> what about the guards at the roadblock? He must have gone. I haven't heard from Jean. Come on, make it snappy. I'm taking your last truck from here. About half a mile down the road, there's a fallen tree on the left. Follow the track up to an old quarry and wait for me. All right? All right. Five minutes for me, will you? Hey, mister, what's going on around here? Take too long to tell you. Hey, mister, you're not doing anything illegal, are you? Illegal? Okay, okay. Just don't want to get mixed up in anything, that's all. You do that? Act of God. Hey, I don't like this. You'd better. You're stuck with it. Can't get out now. Construction camp. Butler? Speaker, this is Mr. Morgan? Listen, I... The line's not too good. There's been a fall down by the roadblock. Get every man available to clear it. Yes, but... Every man, I said. And take the guard off the hoist. Nobody can use it with the road the state is in now. And if I get there before you, God help you. Right away, Mr. Morgan. God help him anyway, poor Claude. Look, does Mr. MacDonald know about this? He will. Come on. I don't take orders from you. I work for Mr. MacDonald. Fine. Just you stay here and explain to Mr. Morgan. Morgan? I'll come with you. Oh, no, not Thames. Thames is unlucky. I thought I told you to go home. Oh, shut up and move over. Better sit in the middle. Landslide of yours certainly made enough din. Yeah, worked better than I thought. 
He dynamited it, Mr. MacDonald. Did he? Yeah. Well, we might make it after all. You shouldn't have let her come. You're playing it tougher than I thought. You try and stop her, that's all. Look, you've got to be practical about this. You're going to need a cook up there. Cook? How long are we staying? Here they come. You're going to kill the rockfall now. Do you think that's all the men Morgan had at the top? I hope so. When we blow the bridge, they'll be cut off. And there won't be anyone to stop us. We better get down to the bridge before they know I use dynamite. Get up now. You could get ten years for doing this, you know that? Do you know, I don't think they'd give me more than six months. You want to make a bet? Anything you like. work this infernal machine. Well, we'll have a jolly good... Damn, they haven't all gone down. Better leave this to me. They'll recognize you. Special equipment. Got to be up top by seven o'clock. Says who? Morgan, who do you think? News to me. Got a pass? Morgan hasn't got time to waste with passes. The road's blocked good and solid. Ring down and get an okay, Joe. I wouldn't waste your time if you want to keep your job. This lot's costing Morgan a thousand bucks a day. Go down as soon as you phone, Mr. Morgan. I didn't phone. No answer, Pete. What do you expect with half a mountain sitting on the line? All right, you better give us a hand with loading the trucks. Take them away, boys. Better give them a hand, I guess. Hey, this ain't a landslide. It's been dynamited. The hoist! You told me to bring all the men down and start clearing. Shut up! I'll get the road clear! Snap it up, for Pete's sake. This is going to take all day. Yes, boy. We lost ten minutes starting the engine of the heist. What? Oh. Yeah, the fourth one's just coming into sight now.
Stop the hoist! Stop the hoist! But Mr. Morgan... I said stop the hoist! There's a truck halfway up! Oh! What's the water? What, Mr. Morgan? Now bring her down. What the hell? Tim! Yes, fine. Well, Morgan can't complain. He's got his hoist back. <laughs> right, let's get drilling. Is that it yet? Yeah. The drill's working. Well, how's it going? Go and take a look. What are we making? About eight foot an hour. That's good. Good if it lasts. That's 200 a day. 5,000 will take what, four weeks? Oh, you say four weeks. I prefer to say nothing at all. It's tempting providence. Four weeks. Four weeks. You said a fourth at the most, but sluice number five's got to be reset in any case. Yeah, that's true enough. Now look, I got a contract. Now look, I want this damn finished and working within two weeks. Or I'll see you don't get another job this out of Calgary. Tell them stuff is ready, will you, boy? Okay, Jean. Well, it looks all right to me. There you are. Well, come on, don't just stand there letting it get cold. You better go, come on. She's a great girl. Does she know you think so? Yeah, she knows all right, but no use. You've asked him? Sure I have. Too many times. And no go. That's right. Eight feet an hour, huh? Sure is sweet music. I hope we're right. Sure we're right, don't you worry. Again. What's wrong with steak, for Pete's sake? I happen to be on an egg and milk diet. It's a nice noise. Yes. Jean, Bladen and McDonald get a percentage out of this. But you don't get anything, do you? So what? 
Well, I was thinking that if we do strike oil, I'd like you to have a share. No. What do you mean, no? I've had my share already. What on earth are you talking about? You remember you asked me once what I was doing in Come Lucky? Yes. Well, there is a reason. I was trying to make up for what my father did. Your father? Yes. He was Stuart Campbell's partner. He got away with the money, and your grandfather went to jail. Oh, I'm not defending him. I can't. But, Jean, it was a long time ago. No, please let me say it. All those years in England at school, and afterwards having a whale of a time, it was all being paid for by the people of Cumlock. Every cent. And that's why you're here? Yes. I thought maybe I could... Repay the debt in some way. I wanted to do something. When you came, I saw my chance. I wanted to help you. You have. Not unless we bring in an oil well. Otherwise, I've just been wasting precious time. There must be oil. There's just got to be. It doesn't make any difference, you know, what you've just told me. I still want you to have a share. No, Bruce. I... I shan't need the money. And I've no family to leave it to. I haven't any right to your money. You could have had, you know, if things had been different. No, don't, don't look around. You know what I want to say, but I mustn't. There's no future for us. Oh, Bruce, I don't care about the future. You're here now, aren't you? Aren't you? Them. Sorry, I couldn't stop them. It's all right, they'd have got the rig if it hadn't been for you. It's all my fault. I started the rough stuff. Don't worry about me, I'm insured. But we can't do it without fuel. The 
one tank is still all right. Surely, but it's nearly empty. There's enough for four days, and then... How much do you want? A thousand gallons. You'll be shot dead if you try and use the hoist again. There's always a pony trail. Yes. One pony will carry 20 gallons if you're lucky. You'll need a heck of a lot of ponies. And two thousand dollars. Have you got two thousand dollars? Haven't got two hundred. Morgan, they'll see you can't borrow it from anyone around here. Borrow it? Bladen. Mm -hmm. Could you get the ponies and the diesel? Sure, that's easy enough, but... Well, I'll get the money. I'm sorry to come so late, but I didn't want to be seen. I think I know why you've come. I didn't want to, but under the circumstances, there's nothing else I could do. When one is old and useless, you've no idea the pleasure it gives to be able to help. How much do you want? Two thousand dollars. Fine, I'll get it for you. Get what? You mind your own business, Abigail, dear. Who said it couldn't be done? What's the matter with you? I was just thinking this is rather heavy work. Too heavy for a dying man, do you mean? Yes. That's what I mean. got away with that one, boy. I hope nobody saw us. Morgan, they're getting queued up on ponies. Yeah. What? Do nothing? Forget it. Yeah, okay. Broke five drills. Tell you that rock's like granite. Does that mean you're giving up? Nobody ever struck oil through rock like that. Then you'll be the first. Now, wait a minute. My boys are working for nothing, don't forget. We were working for nothing. Guess we've had enough. That's the way it is. They reckon they can make steady money somewhere else. You mean you're backing out now? No, listen, G. It's not as if they were being paid anything. This was a gamble. It still is. A gamble's a gamble till you've either won or lost. You can't give up halfway. Hey! Hey, look! We got prisoners! Morgan, isn't it? Yeah, quite a delegation. You feel a bit more like giving up, though, Campbell? No. That's too bad. This guy's a solicitor, Campbell. He's here to witness that I'm serving notice on you from the Fergus Mining Corporation. That under the provisions of the Provincial Government Act of 1939, flooding of this area can be expected any time after the 18th of June. That's exactly five days from now. Okay. I'm sorry, fellas, but there it is. What are you doing with this thing? About uh, six inches a day? <laughs> you pull out now, McDonald. You may get another job in these parts. Carry on working, and I'll see to it personally that you don't get another job this side of the Rockies. 
The 18th of June, Camel. No, honey, he's better left alone. Poor devil, he's taking it pretty hard. What can you wonder? What you don't know, any of you, is, is he's only got a few more months to live. It's not going to help him if we do strike oil. He doesn't stand to gain anything out of this anyway. He'd never forgive me if he knew I told you. Just thought you ought to know what sort of a man it is you're walking out on. Bruce Campbell's got more guts than a lot of you put together. You've started drilling again. Of course we have. You've been asleep for eight hours. What made you change your mind? Oh, we thought that even if you were a camel, we might as well help you out. Hey, we're through that block. It's ten feet an hour now. Ten! Come on! my boots! Yeah. Wait for me! tomorrow and telephone the news to Calgary. And someone better tell Morgan. You won't need telling. See it 20 miles away. Besides, he's not due to flood for another four days. <laughs> oh, that's no good at all. I knew he was outside Glasgow anyhow. I don't have to teach you reels yet. I want you to drink a toast. I was going to say to Bruce Campbell, but I think this is rather a family affair. So let's make it to the two Campbells, past and present. Here, here. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Bruce. A 
I said it. What? He can't flood oil. He can't, but he has. Better say what you can. We'll be underwater by morning. You better start packing up. This is going to take all night. The truck! Get those trucks! Morgan will pay for this. We can't prove a thing. The way the drill's all bent. They say we faked it. Uh, we'd never get him to drain the dam anyway. Wait till I lay my hands on him. Down below with the men. You want something, Campbell? Do you realize you flooded oil? If you mean that little bonfire you lit last night, it didn't fool us. They flooded four days early. We've got the law on our side. Let's leave it that way. Suddenly went, just like that. Better get out of here, quick! What's happening? The whole thing will go any minute. Better get down and warn the men. Not me. But you've got to go down there! They haven't got a chance. Come on, get it on them. Come on! I told you about that, that cement! They can't hear the alarm bell down there! Come on, the horse. Take it down. Come on, get it down quick.
Right. I think we'll have the blood sample now, nurse. Yes, Doctor. Just a routine checkup. You can't kid me, Doctor. I know what the result's going to be right from the start. I had all this out with my doctors in London. They gave me six months at the outside. I've been hearing a bit about you. For a man with a progressively weakening disease, you've been leading a surprisingly active life lately. It's the air up in the mountains. Maybe, but I wouldn't say that altitude or mountain air would make all that change to the body chemistry. You may as well be told that this is only a check sample we are taking now. I took one earlier, and there was no sign of any trouble. You mean I'm all right? Yes. I didn't think I had very much time. All I wanted to do was to strike oil. Hi. I brought the mail. I, uh, I think this is the one you're going to be most interested in. Oh, I uh, ran into Miss Ruth down at Cumlucky. He told her what she said. Ah, the drill's working again. Won't be long before they start collecting a few dividends on the 2,000 they lent you. Oh, I uh, told her about your other bit of good news, too. It's from the consultant in Ottawa. It agrees with the hospital report. Well, it looks like you got her under false pretenses. <laughs> if you hadn't have broken your arm, they'd never have x-rayed you. We might never have known. No. Well, I guess you'll be able to uh, stick around and collect some of those millions now, huh? Yeah. <laughs> 